people, dressed as they are, come from all over the United States to make deals here in the marketplace of America. Let's make a deal. And now, here's America's top trader, TV's big dealer, Monty Hall. On September 30th, 2017, we lost a big name in statistics. Now, there's not a lot of statistical phenomena named after famous celebrities. We have no Kardashian quadrature or Jay-Z distribution. But we do have the Monty Hall effect. Now, if you're my age or a little older, you may remember Monty Hall as the host of an old game show called Let's Make a Deal. The deal is worth $8,757. Is it behind door number one or door number two or door number three? Contestants would come dressed in goofy costumes, and in the quintessential game on the show, Monty Hall would show them three doors, and behind one of the doors he had hidden the big prize, maybe a new car or a big cruise, and behind the other two doors he'd hidden either a mediocre prize or maybe some gag gift. Oh, no, not a lion either, but a ship of the desert, a live camel. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this lady going back to Elgin, Illinois with a camel? So the way it worked was that a contestant would pick the door, door one, two, or three, where they thought the big prize was. Then Monty would show them what was behind one of the other remaining doors, camel or some mediocre prize, and they'd be given a chance to either stick with their original door or switch to the other remaining door. Should you stay or should you switch? Well, it all comes down to probability. At the start, what was the probability that you picked the correct door? Well, that's one-third. You remember, there were three doors and you picked one, so it was one out of three. But now after showing you what's behind one of the other doors, there's only two doors left. So what's the probability now that you have the correct door? One half? There's two doors left and you have one of them. Isn't it one half? No, it's still one third. And that's the Monty Hall effect. Most people think that their chances have improved up to one half and they'll stay with their original door. In fact, they should switch because on average, two out of three times, it's the other door that has the big prize. Now, this may seem a little crazy, and over the years, it's confused a lot of people, even very smart people with math. But to see why you should always switch, let's work through an example. I'll be Monty Hall, and here are my three doors. Behind door number one, I'm going to put a camel, okay? And behind door number two, let's put another camel. And behind door number three, we'll put the fancy sports car. Now here comes our contestant, and let's say that he picks door number one. Now as Monty Hall, it's my job to show him what's behind one of the other two doors. And this is the important part because I have information the contestant doesn't. I know where the car is, and I'm not going to open up the door where the car is because that'll just ruin the whole show, won't it? Now remember, I know the car is behind door number three. So I'll open up door number two instead. I then ask the contestant, do you want to stay with door number one or switch to door number three? Well, if he stays, he gets a camel and loses. On the other hand, if he switches to door number three, he gets the sports car and wins. So switching is the right move in this case. But what if he picked door number two instead? Let's close the curtains and pretend that our contestant actually picked door number two. Now remember, the car is still behind door number three, so when it comes time for me to show him what's behind one of the other doors, I'm not going to open door number three. 
Instead, I'll show him what's behind door number one. Now, when I ask him whether he wants to keep door number two or swap for door number three, what should he do? Like we saw with door number one, if he stays, he gets a camel and loses. But if he switches to door number three, he gets the sports car and wins. Okay, there's one last possibility. What if he picked door number three? Let's close the curtains and pretend that instead our contestant picked door number three. The car is still behind door number three, so when it comes time for me to show him what's behind one of the other doors, it really doesn't matter which one I pick. They both have a camel. As a result, because he picked the correct window at the start, switching is always the wrong choice. Instead, in this case, he wins by sticking with his original window. Overall, notice that if the contestant stays with their original choice, they lose twice and only win once. Their chance of winning is only one-third. On the other hand, if they switch, they win twice and only lose once. They have a two-thirds chance of winning. Also, if you think about it, you should see that it doesn't matter exactly which door gets the car at the start. It's always the same. One-third chance of winning if you stay with the original choice, and two-thirds chance of winning if you switch. Now the key is, because Monty Hall knew which door the car was behind, he knew which door not to open. And that information influenced the results in a way that confused a lot of people, even people comfortable with statistics. Now, I should point out that Monty Hall was interviewed about this a lot later in life, and he would point out that while they often followed this pattern, they did mix it up from time to time. Nevertheless, it's an entertaining and informative way about looking at statistics and how we see statistics in, in real life in ways, even in game shows. So I hope you found this informative and entertaining. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.